हेलो एवरीवन हम डॉक्टर हिरण ज्योति दास कंसल्टेंट पैथोलॉजिस्ट एंड क्वालिटी हेड एट नारायण सुपर स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल टुडे ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ वर्ल्ड किडनी डे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स अबाउट किडनी डिजीज एंड रिनिंग ट्रांसप्लांट प्रोग्राम्स एंड टू डिस्कस अबाउट दिस सब्जेक्ट आई एम जॉइन बाय डॉक्टर हबीब चिलानी कंसल्टेंट नेफ्रोलॉजिस्ट एट नारायण सुपर स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल गुवाहाटी uh welcome doctor thank you very much uh just uh, tell us something about uh, chronic kidney disease yeah as we know that kidney disease is divided into two that's acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease for chronic kidney disease if we go by definition that the ailment of kidney should be there for at least 3 months or the patient should have structural or functional problem in the kidney which is lasting for at 3 months if we take And other is acute kidney. Injury. Sure. Acute meaning that uh, the problem is presented just now. So we'll discuss about the chronic kidney disease today. Is on 12th of this month we are celebrating Kidney World Kidney Day, uh, which is celebrated every year on the second Thursday of March. Uh, the basic theme of this day is that uh, we highlight particular issues regarding the kidney disease and we stress upon those issues. They can be related to the general population. They can be related to the patients in particular, but for all the masses, they may be. So, uh, as I told, we are celebrating uh, World Kidney Day on 12th of the March. The theme of this uh, day, this uh, year's World Kidney Day, is that kidney health for everyone and everywhere. Uh, Doctor, can you uh, uh, briefly tell us about the common signs and symptoms? Of uh, chronic kidney disease. Before coming to the signs and symptoms, we should know how severe this problem is in the locality. Okay. Uh, if we go by the statistics, the kidney disease around 850 million patients worldwide. In every 10, there will be one patient that will be having a chronic kidney disease. As we know, diabetes and hypertension are quite rampant in this uh, uh, world. Because of our lifestyle changes and everything, Western diet and all those habits we have created, so definitely kidney disease is going to progress very rapidly. And by 2040, it has been estimated that it will be the fifth leading cause of death uh, among the general population. So coming to the symptoms, the patients uh, should be aware that how kidney disease presents and what are the initial symptoms. So that from beginning they will be aware and they will take the preventive measures. So, if we see the kidney disease, we divide in five stages. For stage one, two, and three, usually there will be no symptoms. So, it's very difficult to pick on it earlier. So, for these, uh, we stress every patient who is high risk patient, like who has history of diabetes, who has history of hypertension, elderly, who have history of recurrent urinary infections, or there is failure to thrive in the children. Those patients are considered as high risk to have kidney disease. They should go preemptively for screening. Just yeah. like we can do screening every year, or we do screening of children at school level. Mm-hmm. This should be taken care of so that we can pick up the kidney kidney disease at an early stage. If uh, there is a progression of kidney disease, for example, somebody has been missed out at early stage and there is progression, the patient can present with the symptoms of like you will have decreased urine output. There will be urination in the night time. Multiple times he has to go to the urine. And there will be decrease in hemoglobin. He will feel fatigued. Exertion will be there. Mm-hmm. There will be decrease in the appetite. In all those symptoms, uh, one should keep in mind that if it is a kidney disease, he should get evaluated for the kidney disease. So, uh, coming to the treatment part. So, what are the common modalities that is uh, available uh, for treatment of chronic kidney disease? Yes, kidney disease treatment we divide into three. First to the medical management. After preventive measures, we can go for the medical management. Then is the renal replacement therapy in the form of dialysis, which is either a hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. In the definitive management, once patient is uh, dependent on the dialysis, the definitive management will be the kidney transplant issue. Okay. So, uh, doctor, uh, can you tell us about uh, the exact time when uh, the patient should realize? Okay, this is the right time to go for a renal transplant. 
So as I already told that we divide the kidney stage into five stages. One is the GFR is below 15. Okay. We say this is stage 5 kidney disease. Patient may be dialysis requiring or he may require dialysis in the near future. Okay. So if we go by the international guidelines, the GFR of 20 and below, we should actively search for renal replacement therapy in the form of transplantation. Okay. And uh, uh, what are the different sources of uh, Rindel, uh, like uh, kidney, or uh, what are the different types of uh, transplantation, transplantation programs? Yes. There are many transplantation programs going in the world, like Spanish model is a well known model for okay. kidney transplantation that everybody is taking that he will donate the kidney unless okay. he refuses to do so. This is a common program. Okay. Then we transplant pool, that the donor pool is very big and they have achieved quite good success in that way. Okay. Other options for donation is the, for example, we take live related donors. So we can take live unrelated donors provided the legal formalities are taken care of. Others are cadaveric transplant ones. There are so many road traffic accidents and so many kinds of death and patients can donate. So in that case, we need to document the brain death and the donation of the cardiac death. Those are the options. Other options are that we can do the swab. Swab we do usually when there is APO incompatible. For example, blood, my blood group is not matching with my donor, but my blood group is matching with other donors. So the two do donors can swab the kidneys for their recipients. So, so these are the options we can. Okay. Is there any uh, difference in the outcome uh, based on the different types of uh, renal transplant programs? Usually, if there is a related live related transplant, the outcome is very good. The okay. success rate of kidney transplantation, the live related is more than ninety five percent. For cadaveric transplant, there may be a slight decrease in the outcome in the long term, but acutely outcome after one year or after five years, the outcome is not that significantly different. Mm -hmm. So we should actually look for the cadaveric donors as well as the live donors to increase the pool of donation. Because every year the the donor is donor number is very less as compared to the patient who need kidney. So uh, if we uh, talk about the uh, benefits of uh, renal transplant uh, or uh, how is the life uh, of a patient after uh, transplant programs? How it is different uh, whether they are able to do their daily activities or physical activities kind of thing? Definitely, transplant is the best for modality patient or PSRD can have. One is they will uh, enjoy the quality of life. So they will be off dialysis after successful transplantation. Mm -hmm. Every time patient has to be on dialysis, if we take hemodialysis for four hours and three times a week, it is a quite big burden for patients as well as the attendants. So they definitely enjoy the quality of life and all the other aspects like hemoglobin, bone disease, nutritional aspect, they will definitely having better as compared to the dialysis. And the mortality is very less in transplant patients as compared to the dialysis patients. So, uh, is there any uh, like special restrictions or uh, like uh, precautions to be taken in post transplant? Initially, basically, first three months are uh, considered to be very critical in terms of uh, infection okay. because infection rates are uh, slightly higher after transplantation. This patient is maintained on uh, immunosuppression so that the, the fighting capacity of body against infection goes a little bit down. Okay. But that part can be taken care of very well. After three to five months, they can quite live normal life. They can just follow up and monitor their kidney function, their drug levels. They can enjoy the normal life, they can join their routine work. Okay. Uh, doctor, uh, my final question to you, like, uh, uh, is there uh, any uh, uh, like a failure kind of thing of the transplant? Usually the we take if the donation has been done from the live transplant, we take that half life of kidney. That means if hundred patients are being transplanted, the fifty will have functioning kidney up to twenty years. Yes. So, yeah, in more than twenty. It has been seen more, more than, than twenty, 20 years yes. for live related. For a deceased donor, I mean cadaveric transplantation, ten to fifteen years has been seen the half life. Okay. So in case of failure, uh, what would be the 
next state or uh, patient will fall back to yeah, the yeah. setting or any other serious competition. Yeah, so the best be. modality again will be to go for the second transplant. Second transplant. Yeah, right. we can okay. do very well second transplant. Even three transplants can be done. There is no issue with number of transplants. Only immunosuppression has to be monitored okay. and uh, we have to take them as uh, high in sick cases so that the chance of rejection increase as compared to the naive transplant. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for such a good inform information. And uh, I'm sure my uh, viewers will be uh, very uh, like uh, informed about this uh, renal transplant program. And if you have any query, you can write to us in the comment box. And uh, my team, uh, our hospital team, will uh, contact you to uh, resolve your queries. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Doctor. Thank you.